The previous Morphine M8S was a really nice mini PC in the budget segment with Intel Zen 100. Now, with the release of Intel Zen 150, we have a new version following in its footsteps, the M8S Plus. This is the first N150 mini PC tested on the channel featuring DDR5 memory. So we'll finally get the answer to the all important question of how much of an actual difference does it make over DDR4. The new M8S Plus is a dark blue all plastic box with just okay plastic quality and an unfortunate orange power button that causes my eyes to bleed. But more importantly is what's inside this tiny box. And that is the Intel N150, a 4 core, 4 thread CPU with UHD graphics. The M8S Plus is currently available on the Morphine official website starting at US$179 for the bare bones. But that does still come with 12GB of soldered LPDDR5 RAM. You'll need to add your own SSD and operating system. For an extra $10, a 128GB SSD with Windows is included and it just goes up from there. In this video, I'll be reviewing the 512GB model. Included in the box is a USB-C power supply manual and HDMI cable. No mounting options are available with this Mini. On the front of it is that nice power button. Inside the Mini is a budget Intel wireless AC chip for Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. On the left side are three USB 3 type A ports and the back has a type C which only supports power. You can use your USB-C monitor to power it but you'll still need to use one of the display ports which is a missed opportunity. Dual Realtek Gigabit LAN is also included. The right side has a display port and two HDMI, so you can hook up a maximum of three displays at 4K 60Hz supported by this graphics chip. Adding more monitors will strain the integrated graphics at that resolution, unless you're doing simple stuff on all screens. Now let's open it up, it's nice and easy. Four exposed screws, pull on the rubber and pop that lid off. Inside is an M.2 2242 slot supporting SATA and NVMe at Gen 3 X2 speeds and an NVMe drive is included for this pre-build. Underneath it is the M.2 Wi-Fi card. Windows 11 Pro is included with the pre-build and the malware scan which is done in every review, also testing for rootkits, came back STD, I mean malware free. Surprisingly, Ubuntu works fine with this DDR5-N150 model, unlike the previous two DDR4 minis which had a missing graphics driver. While display now works fine, one thing still missing is HDMI audio output. Looking into this issue further, you can get the DDR4 minis working by updating the kernel. I've linked the guide in the video description. Okay, and with that out of the way, let's hit the benchmarks, starting with single core Cinebench. The M8S Plus shoots up to near top of the list. By default, Cinebench Multicore is unimpressive, but after tweaking the power limit in the BIOS, we get a score matching the best N100s where it should be. Moving on to Geekbench, the N150s are all at the top of this stack. In Multicore, the M8S Plus beats all the N150s by a lot whether it was the default power mode or increase. So DDR5 definitely helps with the different CPU benchmark tests that Geekbench uses while it doesn't benefit Cinebench results. H.264 video encoding is unimpressive out of the box, but with a power limit tweak, it gets only beaten out by the N200. 3D Mark is where the most interesting data kicks in. DDR5 further improves graphics performance over DDR4 3200 and more than what we saw with the N100, which had a few percent improvement at most. Taking the best N150 DDR4 score, there's almost a 9% improvement for the M8S Plus in DX11, 4% in DX12 TimeSpy, and 5% in DX12 Steel Nomad. Typically, the DX11 tests benefit the most with extra memory bandwidth. So that's 3D Mark. Let's see how it compares to a DDR4, N150, and an N100 with gaming workloads. The results are pretty surprising. Starting with Valorant. The average frame rate was far above the other two, as was the 1% lows. On the M8S Plus, it's very playable, with few dips after the shaders have compiled. 
there's also over a 10% average FPS improvement in Hades 2. So, that's some nice gains. As mentioned in the previous N150 review, a bunch of emulated games at 720p would dip below 60fps on the N100 and now hold 60 thanks to the better integrated graphics. But there are still games like Gran Turismo 4 that need higher single core performance to power through 60fps in some areas. The budget minis typically don't have any audio latency issues when all cores are loaded with Cinebench running in the background, as they aren't thermal throttling. And that's the result here with this one passing no problem. Intel's QuickSync hardware decoder is so good that even these ultra budget chips can handle 1080p video projects decently. The CPU and GPU gets a real workout in Adobe Premiere, and I wouldn't recommend it for anything other than simple edits but it works better than you'd expect for the ultra low end. Thanks to the X2 Speed Gen 3 NVMe drive, Morphine's M8S Plus has the fastest storage drive benchmark so far. Unfortunately, there's no working temperature sensor on the drive, so the maximum couldn't be recorded. It is running at half its maximum speed due to the PCIe limitations of Intel's older Lake end platform, and that will reduce the amount of heat coming off the drive but there is a possibility of thermal throttling when there's no NVMe cooling like in this Mini. Bluetooth range is very good, matching the best result for a Mini with no external antennas at just over 7 meters or 23 feet. Unfortunately, the same can't be said for Wi-Fi. The M8S Plus showed my 5G router as a very weak signal from 12 meters or 39 feet and wasn't able to sustain a connection. Only option is to get closer or use the 2.4G band. So, that's a fail. Idle power draw is slightly above average at 10 watts. The maximum is on the higher end of the stack, slightly above average, but nothing out of the ordinary. So, how hot does it get? Well, the maximum CPU temp holds around the mid 80 c mark, which is more than others. It's not a temp I would worry about, but some of the other mini PCs run quite a bit cooler. Fan noise is very low, and even under load, it's just audible. The M8S Plus is a quiet mini PC. Mashing the delete key on startup will get you into the BIOS. To change the power limit, head to power and performance, CPU power management control, view configure turbo options, and set PL1 and PL2 to 30,000 to force it, and save and exit. Also in advance, you can mess with the fan curve in hardware monitor. In the chipset tab, you'll find wake on LAN and auto power on. I couldn't find an option for changing the VRAM limit, but typically for these chips, it doesn't help. Looking at the volume chart, it's a very small mini PC and doesn't take up much room on your desk. That does come at the expense of expandability and ports. Okay, so let's go over the pros and cons. Morphine's M8S Plus is the fastest N150 Mini so far. It still gets beaten in integrated graphics by the N97, but otherwise, it's the next best option. Fast storage is included if you get the pre-build, and it's tiny and highly portable if that's what you're looking for. Fan noise is low, and it's a very quiet Mini PC. The M8S Plus includes 12GB of LPDDR5 memory, which does provide decent performance gains. However, that memory is not replaceable or upgradable. USB-C power and display is not supported. The only thing you can do is power it with USB-C. While Bluetooth was fine, Wi-Fi range was not great on my unit. No additional storage options are available, and the pricing is getting close to a Ryzen 5000 series unit, providing much more performance and features across the board. So, that's the Morphine M8S Plus. Excellent Intel N150 performance in a tiny mini PC with a limited feature set. If you're looking for a much more powerful mini PC, check out my review of the Morphine M600 featuring the Ryzen 8000 series flagship. You can find it right here. Cheers!